Hello and welcome to Fossil Arcade, the YouTube channel with a target audience of me. Well, I suppose you as well, <laughs> yep. Alex. And my mum. Hello, everybody. This time last year, we did a special video all about GameCube demo discs, but we didn't cover everything. We left some things out. There's more. One in particular is a Star Wars demo disc. Ooh. And Alex is a big Star Wars fan. So we thought it would be fun Wars. to go back and check it out. So this demo disc in particular was a special pre-order bonus if you bought Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3 Rebel Strike. If you pre-ordered it at game in the UK, um, you'd pay a five pound deposit and you'd get this disc. But what you get on the demo disc is a demo of Rebel Strike and the original Star Wars arcade game from 1983. The whole game? Yeah. You can access the Star Wars arcade game in Rebel Strike if you have the full game. You can get it either by entering a cheat code or by completing submissions. I'll put the cheat code on the screen so if you have Rebel Strike you can access it. But of course if you pre-ordered it and you got this disc, that was like your bonus. Did this kind of thing happen a lot, getting demo discs with pre-orders? I remember demo discs on magazines and, and, and that kind of thing, mm. but I don't remember getting many uh, as pre-orders. Sometimes you get them with another game, you sure. know, Battlefield Solid 2, for instance, exactly, Zone of the Enders, yeah. but I don't remember that many times pre-ordering something and getting a demo of that game. This, as far as I'm aware, was a one-of-a-kind situation on GameCube because GameCube demo discs are a very rare yeah. thing. But it's it's still funny to think, isn't it? You've you've put money down before you've played, and you know that um, that gives you the the demo, yes. and then you might get back and think, no, this game's not really for me. That's the thing is that you put a five pound deposit down, you get the disc, and then you've kind of bought the disc in a way. It's taken that five pounds off to full purchase price. If you decided you didn't like it though, you could just say like, well, I'm on five pounds out of pocket, but I have this disc. Yeah. And I expect a lot of people who got the pre-ordered demo disc were doing it for the collection element rather than like oh I need to pre-order Rebel Strike because <laughs> it might sell out. The Rebel Strike demo that's in here we've actually played it before in our larger um, GameCube demo disc video it's yeah. the exact same stage so even we've already seen that before we're going to go straight on to the arcade game and focus on that because other than original ports of the arcade game you know from Atari systems and, and older consoles this is the only modern port it's ever had it's never been re-released on like a downloadable service or, or mm. Steam or anything like that so being able to play this in HD on a GameCube is quite a rare thing so I'm gonna hand it over to you, oh, thank you. and you can give stars a go Alright, there's a lot of controls. <laughs> it's actually only one thing. Oh, it, oh it's just the same thing, it's just <laughs> yeah. repeated. I, I just saw those controls, thought, oh no, not used. Lots to learn here. It'd be better if it just told you what was used instead yeah. of saying it's like, just not used. A anyway. is fire, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> one of the other reasons we wanted to play this was because we're also very excited for Star Wars Squadrons, which is coming up soon. Yes. The VR game. Extremely excited. So yeah, we're part of Leia's, Princess Leia's Rebel Force. And you see that Obi and Wan are the top High score holders here. So there's three difficulty modes. We guess we could start with easy and see how we go. Oh, it's it's like inverted, like really weirdly Is inverted. It? Yeah, like I'm having to press You've got two down seconds. left. I'm trying to select. Oh, there you go. That was weird. <laughs> I mean, it's literally just the stick and the button, and that's it. Oh, it's it, it it kind of feels like it's choosing where I fly. That's it. Yeah, you don't it's really up. fly. No, you don't really shit. have that control, you're just shooting, yeah. Yeah, it's almost on rails. It throws you for a moment. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting better. And of course it's all line graphics because it's from the era of arcade games using vector screens. So this is not like pixel oh, the art. Desktop. It would have been like beams of light on a screen, which would look really nice on a, on a real vector yeah. display. Oh, we're straight in the trench. <laughs> <laughs> no messing around. How are you finding it difficulty-wise, even though... Oh, like, the difficulty's fine. Nothing, Nothing's hit me. I don't know if I can I hit the walls. Should we try? Go on. Mm, no, it doesn't seem to affect my shield. Maybe on medium hard, that will be the case. I'm guessing the sparkly bits of them firing like that. Ooh. I think those sparkles are then firing at you, yeah. and then like the little sort of smaller sparkles are when you get them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sparkles good or sparkles bad? Oh. I don't know if you got it. Well, I, am I in it? <laughs> I don't remember that in the film. It says exhaust port missed. So I guess when that comes up next time, you've got to try and. Get yeah. in there. See at the top it says wave one. So maybe like that counts down. I think we missed that that detail, wasn't that that it was going up or down. I do what though, the, the the vector graphic almost like 3D style, it's quite effective actually. 
But well, the graphics aren't bad it's in any way. It's the style which doesn't really age because yeah. it's just lines. It has this sort of style to it. Go, go, go! Oh, yeah, got it. Yeah. It's, it's quite hard because you don't have a, a bomb. Oh, there it goes. Wow. You don't have any torpedoes or anything. You're just going to have to shoot it. <laughs> Whoa! It's Death Star destroyed. Oh, oh no, we're now on wave two. Oh, so you just keep on going, so, I guess. Yeah. It's so, cheap. There's infinite Death Stars, which yeah. is, you know... So this is now Return the uh, Return the Jedi, yeah. <laughs> or any of the Death Stars they yeah. keep building. When we played um, Rebel Strike last year on that demo, there was a bit where you had to fire a gun and it kept dragging the cursor back to the center, and you said the control was really awkward, and we didn't really understand why it would have been designed that way. Just just pick one. <laughs> well, I I'm going all over the place. It, it keeps snapping back. If I let go of the oh, stick, yeah. watch. Now we play this and we see like how the controls drags the cursor back to the centre. It seems like that was probably a deliberate reference to this arcade yeah. game, which of course is embedded into Rebel Strike as an unlockable, so it all makes sense in the end. Well, you're having a, a harder time here. This wave mm. two, I noticed straight away that you're getting shot a lot more as well by the TIE Fighters. Do you think it's automatically bumped up to like the medium difficulty potentially? I don't think so. I think just the waves will get harder as we go up, I guess. But yeah, we didn't have any of these obstacles. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it! Did I yeah, get you yes. got it, you got it. Shield gone. Oh, that, I think that's our shield though, isn't it? That's not theirs. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you got blue, blue explosion this time. So yeah, it's funny to think about, like, this was the very first Star Wars game. So early, in fact, in gaming history that it's just called Star Wars. Um, and now, this year, in 2020, we're looking forward to Star Wars Squadron, which is going to be like this, but photorealistic graphics, full VR. Really can't wait to give it a go. Oh, is that Darth Vader? Did you see? There was like a different TIE fighter. Yeah. TIE bomber or... Yeah, it is almost like that Vader's one. Maybe you get more points. I think it is, because he's shooting loads. Did I get him? It's not available in the UK, but you know those one-up arcade cabinets you can get? Mm. It's like a little miniature arcade cabinet. They cost hundreds of dollars. And as I say, you can't get them in the UK anyway, but they do a $500 Star Wars arcade cabinet, which is mini, but has like a little seat on it that you sit in and has like the original control stick. Because wow. this um, game in its original form came in two versions where there was a upright arcade cabinet with just like a little handheld controller. And then there was a full kind of deluxe version, which you would sit inside of and had a more robust kind of steering mechanism that tried to emulate the X-Wing. Today, whilst filming Fast Arcade, we've been eating Hello Pandas. What do you think of Hello Panda? They're very Moorish, mm. and uh, and the shell is very soft, which I think makes it easier. They're not crunchy. It's satisfying all. to crunch, but not difficult to eat. I often refer My to them. Favorite kind of food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's loads of bullets coming at me. Yeah. I want Vader. Okay. Yeah, I think you got him. 2000. Oh, oh, game over. Um, oh, okay, I've got a name in. Uh, how do we do it? Oh, look at these letters. You can like... Oh, you just shoot the letters. Let's put F underscore. This is really hard. A. Come on. <laughs> Yay. There we go. Perfect. End. <laughs> it's harder than the game. Where are we? Oh, we're ninth. Um, speaking of... Solar Squadrons, um, which we're going to play in VR. How do you think this would, would be in VR? <laughs> Alright, why don't you try hard mode hard. in VR? Okay, let's give, that, ooh. Let's give this a try. <laughs> okay, it's not that, oh, I was going to say it's not that hard so far. Oh. But being um, for all these bullets on rails as such, it's like directing you where to look. If it were a proper VR game or properly 3D modelled, you'd obviously have freedom of movement. Like yeah. You'd have agency of where you were looking. Is the kind of it dragging you around making you feel a bit... It is a little bit. It, it, I feel like I'm going around a tunnel, almost, it's, which is quite a bizarre feeling. Um, it doesn't give you as bad motion sickness as some real VR games. Mm. Um, but some of that might be helped by the fact that you don't have control, as weird as that sounds. Like, normally that's a problem, but 
Or we can shoot the top off these towers. Uh, it's basically like looking at a massive cinema screen, isn't it? Yeah. That's what you're seeing. It's very effective and it feels more like the original game would have been as having a large screen mm. that you sit in front of. And but also like being in a dark and noisy arcade with like, the flashing lights. Oh. oh. That was quick. Well, it was hard mode, I guess. Yeah. Let me, uh, I'll get back on medium. Alright. And try that. Might last a bit longer. But uh, yeah, it's it's actually, it's it's probably a more fun and and uh, realistic way to play it. You know, more akin to to the original experience, so, some way. Um, but I find it harder to target the Tie Fighters. I think because you almost have to look at them now, left and right, rather than just scanning your eyes over the screen. And then looking at them, I suppose it it doesn't actually help you. It's like a counteractive thing because you're looking, but then the screen is yeah, like, not. It doesn't actually look. No. no it's just. But so what we're saying is that if you want to play Star Wars Arcade properly, you need to buy a GameCube, track down the demo disc or a copy of Rebel Strike, and unlock the game. Get an HDMI adapter for your GameCube, buy a PlayStation with PlayStation VR, go through the rigmarole of, of hooking the two things together, which is really annoying, Definitely. And, and then play it. Yeah, which is what we did, and yeah, it was no issue at all. It's slightly cheaper than buying that one-up arcade system <laughs> they made, where you get like the actual arcade cabinet in a miniature form. But yeah, I find it quite strange that this game, out of all the Star Wars games, hasn't had a re-release on a modern console, or at least like a digital release on PC, because it's the original Star Wars game. Like, yeah. it's the first one, and it's still like pretty fun. It's still good. It's simplistic, line graphic action. Um, looks really nice in HD. Well, I actually think it's better than some of the <laughs> later Star Wars games. <laughs> Genuinely. Yeah. More recent Star Wars games. It's, it is it is really good. That simplicity that, you know, Star Wars is known for simplicity, basically. It's a very simplistic idea, the whole thing, and that's the, the joy of it. So it probably lends itself quite well to this, you know, more simplistic gameplay style. Right. You had enough of that, have you? Yeah. <laughs> So that was the Star Wars Arcade game. Um, really recommend picking up the demo disc or Rebel Strike purely for the arcade game. If you want to see Alex playing Rebel Strike, you can go back and watch our GameCube demo disc video from last year. Both um, were a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, this, the arcade game, I think, was, was excellent. They should definitely re-release it. Yeah. And, and, and in VR. A proper VR experience would be really good. I'd love a collection of like old vector graphic games, but like in VR or just you know in HD, really. Pre orders yeah. aren't what they used to be either. Like the idea of a pre order bonus, I think, is a thing of the past. Now, game publishers they almost consider it your privilege to pre order rather than like they want to incentivize you to pre order by giving you something. So, this is a relic, really, and it's a really nice kind of artifact to have on GameCube. Um, but yeah, Star Wars Arcade game was, was great. Thank you for playing, thank you for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more Fossil Arcade videos. Bye. <laughs>